So in the next series of lectures, we're going to talk about ways that you can display data visually, for example, in things like charts and graphs. And now we're going to be less concerned about the mechanics of creating charts. Right? There, there are plenty of programs available that will take data and produce professional quality visuals. Our focus is going to be on interpreting these charts and thinking about what kind of chart is the best choice for a given type of data, for a given data set. So here I have some examples of bar charts, right? Bar charts are one of the most commonly used charts to show trends, right? In particular here, I've got trends over time. Now, in these examples, you're seeing company revenue, right? And that's clearly indicated here in the chart titles, right? Uh, the y, the y-axis has the dollar amounts in each case. And if those numbers seem small, right, that's clarified up here in the title, which says the dollar amounts are going to be in millions. And on the x-axis, we have the time value, specifically months. And finally, each chart also has a legend right, that tells you what the individual groups of columns represent, right, in this case, um, which year. Now, you notice a couple of interesting things about these graphs. Um, they're, they're time graphs, and they're showing a full year. But if you look carefully, you'll notice that they actually have slightly more than a year. The, each one has 13 months, right? They don't go January to December. They go January to January. And this is a common thing that you see in charts that, that demonstrate yearly data, right? By going 13 months instead of 12, looking at these charts, they not only let me see the trends over an entire year, but they also let me see what, what was called a year-on-year -year data. They let me see how January, uh, looking, looking at the left-hand chart, I can see how January 2015 compares to the same month, right, January again, but this time in the following year, January in 2016. So a, a dot plot, right? A dot plot is really just a variation on a bar chart. In fact, to make this in Excel, I started with a bar chart and then just changed some of its properties to get dots to show up instead of the usual bars. Now, replacing the bars with dots makes this a practical format only for small to maybe medium-sized data sets. When the frequencies get over around 25, the dots start to get so small that they're difficult to count, and the columns start to look more like lines than individual circles. So these are nice, I think, for teaching young children about charts. Uh, they get to count and draw circles or uh, you know, use one of those blotters that you use to mark bingo cards. Um, but on a practical level, this is an example of a chart that, you know, in, in 25 years of industry experience now, I've never actually seen this used um, outside of a textbook situation. Now, you, you, you've seen bar charts. You've seen one of the most common types of charts. You've also seen how um, there could be just variations. Right, variations on a chart that that really represent the same data, but there there are some differences uh, just to the visual elements. So, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about kind of another variation on a bar chart that's that's used a lot of in uh, in specific statistics situations versus you know business or professional ones. Um, it's a type of chart that's called a histogram.